Good afternoon, it's Jim from Avstar Observatory. We're taking a look at the uh, weather maps that we've got here on um, poleshiftnews.com. Uh, you can see satellite, radar, um, temperature, total precipitation, and uh, we've also got the daily sea surface temperatures. Some good stuff on the website. Um, I, I guess that's why you know every week we have 7,000 people come and view it. There's a good reason why we're looking uh, at the uh, weather maps and um, maps in general um, because we're going to address perhaps something that a lot of people haven't given a lot of thought to but before we do I want to ask a question would you build a house would you invest your money on building a house in floodplains and would you do so if it hadn't flooded on those floodplains for 40 years would that encourage you to buy cheap land and build a house on it? Because that's exactly what's happened here in the UK. Uh, you know, the weather patterns have changed. And because we haven't had flooding in some regions that were commonly flooded, people have built houses on the sides of rivers, for instance. Uh, general floodplains. Even the village which I live in. Uh, about two years ago, we had waist high water flooding people's houses out because there's a brook which is like a little water stream um, you know that flows through the village and we had torrential rain uh, for a couple of weeks solid and it you know it overflowed the brook and you know seeped into the uh, village and flooded the houses out and this was something that hadn't happened for quite some time but you know it is testimony to the nature of our planet and just because you know floodplains haven't flooded for 40 years it's not a good excuse to go building a property on there hoping that the next 40 or 50 years it's going to remain the same there's a reason why they was classified as floodplains and we shouldn't be complacent in just ignoring those facts but what i wanted to talk about is not just about floodplains and whether you know you were the sort of person to ignore these things because there's something far bigger than this I think we need to address and watching a video today um, on YouTube now you guys know Christian at the Ice Age Farmers Channel he's done a great job to date keeping track of what's going on with the food situation globally you know I've even sometimes mentioned you know um, and chipped in a little bit of information but it's nowhere near uh, my expertise to cover this I, I am your pole shift guy I'm the guy that covers mainly the magnetic pole reversal and all what's related to that we also talk about the grand solar minimum but by no means am I the expert on following the progression with food going offline if you want that sort of information people like Christian on the Ice Age uh, channel and um, David Dubai and also uh, Diamond at the Open Amaran Ranch are the guys to go for for that information. You want magnetic uh, information, obviously this is the channel for that. The video I saw on Christian's channel today, the Ice Age Farmer channel, was the police moving in on a farmer's market in Australia. And, you know, I'm not going to go into that. You can go over there and have a look at that video. It's interesting. But what I'm going to tell you guys about is something to do with what we first started talking about at the beginning of this video and it's not really <clears throat> to do with floodplains it's to do with common knowledge of continents if you take Australia for instance it's one of the um, recent uh, colonized uh, countries uh, in recent history when I say that you know the last couple of hundred years you know it's only just really started to um, have colonies move there I remember England sent a lot of people from England over to Australia to colonize it uh, as well as a lot of other overseas territories and we also um, colonized along with France and uh, Ireland even uh, parts of America um, if you go back in the history but before that in America you had just native Indians and in Australia you had Aborigines these were people that had adapted to living on the on these uh, continents um, during times where you know the majority of us would have 
perished very quickly if we hadn't you know brought in equipment to drill for water and things like that i know australia have foreseen a problem with water coming for a long time that's why they invested heavily in the desalination plants and my question to you guys is is this you know there is a good reason why the soil in australia is very red and you know it's only under certain circumstances that soil will turn red and that is through oxidation and solar radiation beating down on that um, continent for a prolonged period of time and you know it is only uh, situations where you get those red soils that you find you know um, small populations are able to sustain a living on them and it's a, it's a bit like the floodplains, you know. Um, you wouldn't build an house just because it hadn't flooded there. I would hope that you would not, you know, take that for granted. And just because it hasn't flooded for 40 years, it wouldn't be a good idea to go and build a house on there because at the end of the day, it has been classified as a floodplain for a reason. And, you know, there will come a point in time where that land will flood again. And what I'm saying is, you know, these places that we've colonised is probably going to revert back to just a small group of people being able to live on them through the changes uh, that we are seeing take place. I don't think uh, Australia, without artificially um, creating the situation where people can thrive on there, is going to make it in the not-too-distant future. And I, I believe that large parts of America and Africa are going to be the same for the simple fact is we go back in history they they only sustained very few people at the most the only reason we have been able to colonize in the in the large numbers that we have today is through technology you know importing water into cities you know cities we are going to come to the understanding commonly that they are not sustainable the only way a city can be sustainable is if there is the ability to grow food to sustain the numbers of these cities and also import energy water you know export rubbish um, waste water etc and you know what we're seeing is globally a problem emerging which is probably understood by these mainstream organisations. It probably is very well understood by these ma mainstream organisations. And that might be the fact that we are probably going back into times where we cannot artificially sustain the numbers in these cities like we have been accustomed to over the recent years. Simply, you know, using the analogy of the floodplains, you know, the floods are returning. And that's what I think we're going to start seeing guys and I think the governments are aware of it and I think that the changes that they've seen they've been able to forecast what is likely to be the case in the future and I think that what is going to be the case in probably the not too distant future is big chunks of land on several continents being inadequate to sustain human life in large forms and numbers i think we have to remember that you know there were only tribes of aborigines in australia and there were only tribes of native indians in america and you know the same for africa the world is becoming unsustainable for the seven billion people right now that are on it and we're starting to see that really come home i hope you i hope you guys are realizing this i hope you guys might question whether you want to remain in these territories for you know the duration of time to see if this theory is correct food is going offline quite clear and simple because of the climate change which is probably related to the magnetic pole reversal and hampered even more so by a grand solar minimum we know that both of these that are working in conjunction with each other 
spells big problems for us. We have the same thing. Inbound cosmic radiation coming through a weakened magnetosphere, which is our primary defence. Our secondary defence, which is the heliosphere, which is kept healthy by solar activity, which is not the case at the moment. And yes, we are at the end of a solar cycle. But as I've shown you, even at the height of solar cycle 24 during 2014-2015, it was not enough. Even at the solar maximum to drive away inbound cosmic radiation, which tells us that solar cycle 25 if it doesn't start to really get a grip and produce, you know, sunspot numbers in, you know, reasonable amounts, we could be looking at an even smaller solar cycle, 25, and therefore nowhere near equilibrium, and therefore the problems are going to compile from this point out. It's scary times, guys. It really is. You know, farmers have become gamblers. Do we put the crops in this month or do we hold back that valuable seeds and hope that we see changes which, you know, make it more um, applicable for us to get that in the ground and get a crop out? They get it wrong, they go out of business. In desperate times and measures, the farmers reach out for these big companies not going to mention the names they produce genetically modified seeds that they they say will do well in a wet climate or well in a dry climate but the problem is it's a gamble because we've seen them put the dry crops in and there's been monsoons that haven't been you know seen for 60 70 years the crop, crops get flooded out that wasn't designed to be in that sort of environment and they get washed away and so does the ability for the farmer to get a crop out of the ground and keep his bills paid. You know, we're seeing India's farmers die out at an alarming rate. We're seeing farmers now, one a week, commit suicide here in the UK. And we're seeing farmers in the United States commit suicide at a rate faster than veterans. Climate change is a reality that we are going to have to live with in the coming years on this planet. And it's not going to be good for all of us. I will promise you that. It won't be good for all of us, guys. All you have to do is a modest bit of research to know there is a real problem that is emerging and is already now affecting us. We were saying a few years ago that this is going to come in now it's here and we're saying right now that this problem is only going to get worse as it does the governments are going to try their best to you know maintain continuity of governments but they are going to get overthrown at some point when they resort to measures of clearing out farmers markets so people can't buy fruit and vegetables that are there harvest already where is the sense in that we've heard that australia are going to run out of rice before christmas and that they are trying to buy their stocks of rice from vietnam which has an export ban on rice at the moment because they can't feed their own people covid19 is a great tool at this point in time you've got to remember that because right now it is conditioning you like i've told you in a couple of weeks ago the video it's conditioning you you know it's like the game simon says simon says pick up the orange simon says put the orange back down on the table Simon says, pick it back up put it down and then simon's going to ask you to do something else and you're going to do it because you've been conditioned already to do it this is psychology that is being used on us all right now, this COVID-19. For me, it's just a common cold. You know, we have had to deal with common colds for hundreds of years. We've never had a cure for the common cold 
there won't be one. We can't even get testing kits right in this country at the moment. So if we can't test, how do we know what, how big the problem is? If, if there's a problem, no one's answering these questions. But trillions of pounds have been spent so far on this and we've got nowhere. We have absolutely got nowhere at all with this in the UK. The government have failed. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the UK, has failed. He hasn't even got testing kits sorted. He can't even offer a test for somebody that has COVID-19 and has been told to get a test to confirm it or not. There isn't one available. He brought millions of testing kits, I believe, from Turkey that were duds. You know, we've seen other prime ministers and presidents and controllers around the world say that their testing kits that, that other countries are using, right, we've tested it. <coughs> excuse me we've tested it on an orange and it said it got covid19 we tested it on a sheep it said it got covid19 we've tested it on oranges again and it says it hadn't got covid19 the test kits do not work so where is all this money going it's been stolen and at the same time we have a looming catastrophe globally it's it's worse it's worse than a bad joke guys because this is coming back home to all of us and it will affect us all you know the climate is what decides where is habitable on this planet and where is not and people will criticize me for saying 7 billion people is too many people to feed when land is going offline by the thousand hectares a week. But we're seeing Australia having to export, sorry, import rice. Used to be a large exporter of rice and now they're running out. We're talking about staples, guys. Staples are what farmers should know like the back of the rand and be able to grow. And the problem is with some of the farmers is they've been in a drought and it's produced probably one of the worst harvests. And this is setting precedents for what else is to come. We have to remember that. It won't be long before we hear the whole of a single continent has gone offline. We already know that there are millions of people on this earth starving right now. Uh, what is happening is a complete dismantling of everything we have got used to and taken for granted for. And you know why uh, the channels that people watch, you know you've heard it yourself. People telling you to grow your own food. It will be a short term, short term uh, remedy for a, a long term problem. That's the problem that we're all facing. We are running out of food quite clearly on this planet. The fish stocks are dwindling. They're nowhere near where they used to be. You know, it's not just the fish stocks that we've depleted. You know, we are going through resources like crazy people. You know, we can only pump out the ground a certain amount of oil before it does eventually run out. And, you know, oil would be better spent or used in the pharmaceutical industry because of all the products that we use in the pharmaceutical industry from crude oil. Instead, we put it in our cars and burn it like bastards. And I'm, not, I'm not concerned in particular about CO2 going into the atmosphere. I don't care about it, to be honest. You know, you put more CO2 in the air, vegetation will thrive, and that's not a bad thing. When you look at Brazil and America, which is losing thousands of hectares a week in forest fires, whether it's bad management or what, you know, it is a failure by our species who are at the top of the food chain and are, and are the um, ones in charge. We're the stewards of this planet and we are the ones failing, not just our own species, but every species across the range because of our poor management of it and the resources. You know, we barred ourselves when we started using cash, money. 
we barred ourselves from the resources in a blink of an eye. When Europe and all the European countries joined Europe, they, they barred themselves from their own cash. No sense at all in that. But I'll tell you now, the unelected officials in Europe were just rubbing their hands because now they're giving loans out to countries. Now they're taking the pensions off the people that can't afford you know, to live. And that is bad management because what have they have done? They've taken jobs from one country and given it to other countries. And when they did that, the countries became, you know, unable to produce a healthy GDP. You know, there was no choice but to borrow money again and hand over more. It's not going to be a pretty picture, I can guarantee you that. And we ain't even got to the bottom of it yet, guys. We ain't even hit the bottom yet. But I guarantee you, don't expect a big bounce. This is going to take years to iron out. And I think, you know, there are going to be civil wars in countries as a result of this. You know, people, when they lose everything, they lose it. As a Gerard Salenti saying, you know, but he's absolutely right. When people lose everything, they completely lose it. And, you know, the police at the moment in these countries, like in Australia, like we've seen, you know, pushing people out of the farmer's market will only be in power a certain amount of time because they are the minority. The ruling governors are the minority. And when people lose everything and they're starving and they start to work together, it will be all over. And, you know, people think that such things don't happen. They do. I can promise you that just because things are the way they are right now and it seems all great you know it's like being in bed with a quilt wrap around you and you're nice and warm and you can you know you're comfortable you've had food you can go to sleep and you know you've got a nice fluffy pillow to put your head on you don't think somebody can rip that off you and expose you to the elements it can happen we've seen it only less than a hundred years ago how people can behave when food becomes a rarity and hard to get hold of it isn't long before people start eating other people we saw that in the blockade if you do a bit of history and do a bit of research just look up the blockade in russia what people got up to over two thousand cannibals arrested in one year they were eating each other can i believe be averted but the way things are there isn't a glimmer of hope because people are tolerating what these governments are doing and there is now because of covid19 no physical way of demonstrating against the governments do you understand that there is obviously a lot of synchronicity that has happened with COVID-19 and how, how well it is working to stop people, you know, protesting, um, you know, opposing governments' behaviours. There's no, there's no mechanism anymore for us to, to stop that unless we break the law. Guys, you know, we do a lot more than just bring it home, the truth to you guys you know at the end of this video if you just take away the fact that you know some of these continents around the world are just like floodplains they should never have been inhabited uh, with human beings in the first place because you know there was a point in time in history where they was just not sustainable to live and they're going to become unsustainable in the future and it doesn't make no difference how much money you throw at it right now you ain't going to change the force of nature, one of the most humidable forces on this planet. You won't beat it. You guys know nature always wins. There's a link down there if you want to help support us. You know, still only three people in the last week and a half have clicked the link on Pulse Shift News to make a donation. Can you believe that? We provide all this information for you guys, mostly for those that can't afford it. We don't bar them. But, you know, how can we keep things running at our end? if we're not getting no support uh, from the majority of people. It's always a few people. Susan, Doug, Bob, Jen, Kathy, Brian, you know, and a few subscribers to our Patreon channel. It's always the same, few people. You know, we're 
this time and time again. You know, things need to change, guys. That's all I'm saying. You know, it's not compulsory or mandatory, but come on, we're a public funded observatory. And I think what we do provide is worth a little bit of support. I think you would agree. Try and enjoy the rest of the day. Again, you know, I'm sorry, guys, that it's not very optimistic, the reports. But it is the way it is. You know, you're adults. I think you all can handle the truth. So link down there if you want to help support us. And look after your loved ones, as always. Bye for now.